Hey folks, we're at DCRamerica.com. This is a super straightforward video. It is not my full like review video. Uh, my review video in the 16 things to know about the Phoenix 6 series is up there. So if you want details on all the new features, then definitely hit that up. If instead you want basically a complete walkthrough of the user interface in one big go, straight one camera shot, the whole thing start to finish, then this video is for you. In the past, people have loved this sort of thing, so I figured we'll do it again here on the Phoenix 6 series. Uh, all I'm gonna do in a second is I'm gonna switch to the camera up there, and we'll go straight down. We're gonna look at the whole thing from start to finish. We're gonna walk through lots of features, get distracted. It'll be kind of fun for like, again, 15 to 20 minutes or so, and then you can go on and do something else the rest of your day. So let's just dive right on into it. This is the Phoenix 6 X Solar. This is the Phoenix 6 Pro. Uh, I guess they're both Pro. The right here is an imaginary Phoenix 6 S, the smaller one, but I haven't unboxed it yet. And it honestly, it doesn't really matter because they're all exactly the same. I'm primarily going to use this one because I have the most data on it. Uh, so it will look kind of better, if you will, in the data spots there. Uh, this is what I've been wearing on my left wrist for the last while, versus this one kind of goes in and out depending on what I'm doing and other watches I'm testing. Uh, but it's just to show you they're exactly the same except for the solar display right there. That is a solar display right there. And if I go down one notch into the widget glances, uh, you'll see that they're identical once you get to weather and beyond. Uh, so you can see solar intensity right there. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this out of the way. <clears throat> And we'll go back to the solar panel there and just kind of walk through things a little bit. So this is the sun icon right there. Uh, each of those little notches around there basically fills up as you get more sun. So on a really bright sunny day, it'll be all the way around in the center illumination of the sun itself versus on a cloudy day, uh, you'll maybe like one or two notches typically. And then indoors here, there's no notches. Down at the bottom there is a solar intensity of over the course of the day. Uh, I've spent most of my day indoors trying to get this review knocked out for, for basically go live today. So I've not have a whole lot there minus the swim that I did right there. So you see a little bit of pop. Uh, if I go down here into the solar intensity widget, I can basically look at the exact same thing over the course of the last six hours. And this is a lot more impressive if you're outdoors. And you can see my full video on it uh, up above there where I kind of show what it looks like as I'm going through forests and whatnot into the clearings at the top of the mountain and back down again. Uh, it's kind of a neat little graph to look at. So these are the widget glances. This is something that's new on the Phoenix 6. Uh, and what it basically does is take the widgets and condense it, what used to be full page things, into these smaller different rows there. Uh, so you can say I can go ahead and into the weather one. And now I'm back to the typical widget that you know and love. If I go on down here, I can see the hourly weather and whatnot, daily weather, etc. So these are the widgets that you've seen in the past. Uh, they're now just condensed down here and you can expand into them. So you can see sunset here in 10 minutes. This is the compass. As I rotate this, you will see, sorry for the lights there, that it is live. So that's showing you that in real time right there. Uh, down here into FTP, training status. The training status is something that new that came within the Mark series and 4945, but did not get ported back to the Phoenix 5 Plus series. And what you see here is how I'm trending for fitness and load. And at the very bottom, you see acclimation for altitude as well as temperature. So I can go into that here, VO2 max, Actually, sorry, quick distraction here. If you find this video useful, whack that like button at the bottom right now. It does really help with the video and the channel quite a bit. Back to the overhead. Uh, here's my seven day load over the course of the last seven days, uh, numerical load, and then you can see the different buckets or categories of load in there. And right now it's ideal for maintaining my fitness, which is fine. And this is the four week load focus. And what you see there are these little like pill boxes right there almost, right there in the middle there and down there. Uh, and that's sort of the optimal range for each of the different types of load. Uh, and if I click on this again, I can see that right now, this particular type of load, uh, the focus that I have is more around VO2 max uh, than it is anything else. I can go back down again, recovery until my next uh, hard session. And then altitude acclimation. I'm right now acclimated to 2,800 feet. I spent a good chunk of last week uh, up high in the Alps, as well as spent last night on an airplane, which meant that I basically is acclimated to 8,000 feet, uh, which is the cabin pressure of the airplane. Now, the way this works is that it takes your workouts as well as where you sleep each night. So it takes a reading just exactly at midnight. In fact, you can actually watch this happen in real time if you want to, and you're really bored sitting there in bed at night. And you can see that it'll show the acclimation based on where you're sleeping. Uh, because I was technically sleeping at a plane that was effectively 8,000 feet uh, for the cabin temperature or cabin pressure, this is actually correct. And so it's, it's pretty cool to see it over time and whatnot. And we'll show a little bit of altitude bit later on. Going down the widget glances, steps, uh, some of the usual stuff that you've seen on past Garmin watches here, health stats, pulse ox, 
This is pulse stocks of the last 24 hours. You can see my flight right there, in fact. Uh, that's the plane going up and then eventually descending back down again. And the measurements over the course of that time period, it's trying to measure the table right now. It's probably not going to work out. And then you can see here, uh, over the last week or so, last uh, week exactly, uh, my altitude and then the pulse ox measurements primarily at night uh, when I'm asleep. And so this is last week when I was up in the Alps, then the weekend, then my flight to New York uh, a day, and then my flight back home again. Uh, and so you can see those altitude spikes over time. So kind of cool stuff. And then go on down here, calendar notifications, regular notifications, music control, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, all the same stuff as before. Battery, battery, inReach is the Garmin inReach device. That's the accessory that you can use for satellite communications. My day, 5,900 steps. Uh, you can go into this a bit more. Heart rate shows my heart rate over time. So you can see, here's me hanging out. Here's my swim I did a little while ago. Then here's me hanging out again. The very end there, it drops out because I've been taking photos and whatnot. So you're not going to see that. And you can see my resting heart rate average over the last seven days. Not particularly awesome, uh, most likely because of all the travel and whatnot, but that is what that is. Uh, so anyways, let's go back into the watch itself. Enough of the widget glances and whatnot. We'll click on the start there. This is where you would start a given workout. Uh, so if I were to go to run here, it would go and start the run workout or start to search for satellite and optical heart rate. And at the top here, you'll notice two things kind of iterating through. It's iterating through 16%, which I've manually turned on to show me a battery percentage, but it's also iterating through eight hours. And you see that right there. That eight hours is telling you how many hours you have left in the current battery mode for run. And we'll talk about battery modes in a second there. I can go up though, if I want to, and this is where I would load Pace Pro plans. So if I create a Pace Pro plan on my phone, and I show this all in the review, both the video review as well as uh, the written review, I can load that Pace Pro plan up. Think of these like Pace bands like you used to have for marathons and whatnot, and probably still do have for marathons, where you get splits for every single mile or kilometer. So I created this 10 kilometer course around Central Park for the other day, loaded it up. You can see the course right there. I can go down, I can see the splits. And these splits are adjusted uh, based on the altitude uh, ascent or descent for a given split, as well as the intensity that I've defined for whether I want to run harder on hills or easier on hills or negative split or positive split the entire thing. Super, super cool stuff. Uh, it's not really just great adjusted pace. It's way more uh, detailed than that. And it takes into account the exact course you're running so you can have targets for each individual lap uh, and lapping each individual split whether it's miles or kilometers. So within here, I'm gonna kind of back out of this for now, all the way out. Um, I can load courses, I can load points of interest, I can change my run settings. Uh, so data screens in here. And this is where you'll see the new ability to do up to eight data fields for a given uh, 6X unit, this one here, versus up to four data, or up to six data fields for the six and 6S six units. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, tweak that there. You can do a couple different settings here, it's a couple different layouts, sorry, as well. So you can see here as I go through this, a few different layouts and kind of back into the normal layouts that you've had in the past there. So bailing out of this, uh, nope, don't save changes, all the way out. And I saw power mode there, so I'm gonna go into that really quick. And power mode here is the first different power mode settings. And so in this particular case, you can see that I've got eight hours remaining in this power mode uh, with GLONASS, and it allows me to do music and notifications and heart rate and all that stuff is listed there. I can go to Ultra Track, which will give me 19 hours, the amount of battery left on this device right now, which is pretty low. Um, I could do Jacket Mode, which is basically, if you have an outside of jacket, like if you're skiing and whatnot, it turns off the optical heart rate sensor. And then I have this A down here, which is a custom battery mode that I made that we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, so backing on out here, uh, training is where you load different interval workouts and whatnot. Navigation is where I load courses up, including uh, Climb Pro courses. Uh, so any course that has altitude in it will show me climb power on that, uh, which allows you to see your climbs within the given course. So it's pretty cool here. If I go and pull up this one right there, uh, you can see Pace Pro, I can see Elevation Plot. I think I can get, there we go, View Climbs. You can see the very first climb is four miles, uh, 4,200 feet up. The second climb is 1.7 miles, 827 feet up. Uh, and this is automatically generated based on the maps on the device itself. If you don't have maps on the device, you can do this via Garmin Connect Mobile instead. So scurrying on back here into the settings a bit more, go all the way back a bit more here. 
back, back, back. And I'm gonna go to regular settings now and show you some of those power management features that we talked about a little bit earlier on. Uh, so most of the rest of this is all the same that you've seen from past watches there. So music and maps and whatnot. I will talk about map themes in a moment, so hopefully I don't forget about that. But I'm gonna keep on going down. Safety and tracking is new to the Phoenix 6 series that came in the 945, basically split into two categories. One is for instant detection, so if you crash your bike, it'll notify your friends and family that you define in the contacts. And then the second is for assistant assistance. And that basically means that if you're walking down a creepy street and you see something sketchy, you can go ahead and do a long hold on one of the buttons. And it'll notify your friends and family and start a live track session automatically that something might not be right. Uh, so it's kind of like those phones that you see on campuses and whatnot that you can kind of let people know in a fairly discreet manner that something's not quite right. Set up emergency contacts here, group track and so on. We're gonna keep on going back down though, because I really wanna show you Power Manager there. So Power Manager takes what Suunto started off with uh, back on the Suunto 9 in terms of basic battery modes and kicks it up a notch. So you can see Power Modes there. These are the same modes we saw earlier. So Full Charge will get me 120 hours in Ultra Track. Jacket Mode will get me 66 hours. The Special A Mode that I'll talk about in a second that I made myself will get me 58 hours. But I'm gonna add a new mode called B because I'm that creative. Uh, and you'll see right now, B mode by default will give me 52 hours. But I'm going to add GPS and I can say, what if I turn off GPS? Well, that'll give me another 40 hours. That's a lot. Um, if I went to Ultra Track, if I went to GLONASS, that's what I have right now. So plus zero hours. If I go to Galileo, it's going to cost me an hour. So I'll do that there. Uh, music, I'll allow. If I disable it, it'll vary the, the battery life. So it's not really a good one to kind of use because it's too variant. Uh, phone though, if I go down here and I go disconnect, that'll save me two hours of time there. Wrist heart rate, if I turn that off, that'll save me 14 hours of time there. Pulse oximeter is turned off, so I just turn off wrist heart rate, that saves you a bunch. If I disable the map, that'll save me some time, but it'll vary depending on use because of how much you're actually using the map, but I'll disable it anyways. The display, always on. If it times out the display, um, it'll save me six hours. And you can see I can keep on doing this and, and tweaking this accessories like amp plus sensors or whatnot, saves me four hours. So when all is said and done, let's see what this gets me. Up to B here has me 86 hours in Galileo without phone, without heart rate. Uh, I can do music if I want to, but of course that's gonna burn through battery like a blowtorch. Uh, but still, you can see you can customize these and make them whatever you want. You can delete them, rename them, etc. cetera. Uh, you can call them something much more creative than B, but this is pretty cool stuff. And then you can apply these on demand before a given activity or workout as well as afterwards. So any point you wanna do that, you can do that. You can switch it mid-workout if you think you're running out of uh, battery life and whatnot. It's, it's again, pretty cool stuff. Now back to here, you probably saw Battery Saver. So what Battery Saver does is kind of follows along with what Casio has where if I enable this here, and I don't have much battery left in this unit, but if I go and turn this on, I went from two days of battery life to 13 days. Uh, but what it does though is it turns on this low power watch face. So if I go back here, all the way back, you'll see my solar watch face is gone and the super low power watch face is there. It doesn't show seconds or anything like that. In fact, that's one of the reasons why when Garmin first introduced Connect IQ, they didn't allow watch faces to display seconds because seconds is a battery hog on watch faces uh, long term. So that's why it's not there. So very low power, it shuts off virtually everything. So phone connectivity, GPS, optical heart rate sensor. The answer is whether or not you turn something off is yes, it, it shuts off everything. So I'm gonna turn that back off though. And I'm gonna show you the last mode here, which is expedition mode. Uh, by the way, here's where the battery percentages that I have enabled right now. Uh, by default, that's like that. Uh, and you can, this is what's on by default. So both of the options are there. We're gonna go back here, start a sport mode and go down to expedition, which is right there. This came from the Mark Expedition series. And the idea behind this is that it'll go ahead and take a GPS data point once every hour. Uh, but it basically shuts down the entire watch otherwise. So you get seven days of battery life right now, uh, but otherwise it's I think 46 days of battery life. So again, this is always showing me how much battery life I have at this exact moment. Uh, so when you're seeing these numbers at the top here, these are largely numbers based on the fact that my battery is down to whatever it was, 10 or 12%, something like that left uh, before I got a charge it. And so, It'll do this plot once every hour, and then it'll keep on plotting as you go along. The idea behind this is if you went like, I don't know, across Africa or something, and apparently didn't have a battery pack in your vehicle, I don't know, who knows, I'm not really sure who's using this, but uh, that's certainly an option there. You can see there's my actual battery percentage at 16%. So even at 16%, I still get seven days of GPS track points at once every hour.
So we'll skate back out of that. And I think I've covered almost everything I wanted to cover here. I'm gonna go swing through this really quick so I don't forget anything. Uh, controls, we talked about watch faces uh, briefly. Sensors, accessories, the exact same as uh, previous with both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. Maps, ah, that's right, I wanted to show you map themes. So map themes is something that's cool and new here. Go into any sport that you're choosing, hold down the left-hand button, the settings for that sport, going down to map, this is way deep, by the way. Map theme and system is what you should just simply call default. That's your default theme. But you can choose a different theme, like no theme, I guess. And then you can choose marine, which will show you kind of a, a boating marine-ish layer. It's not really Garmin's like full marine maps though. So it's sort of like a lake focused marine. It's eh, so, so. Anyways, there's a high contrast map. There's a dark one. There's a popularity routing and there's resort ski. With resort ski mode, you're going to see the 2000 ski areas that are there. With popularity, you're basically going to see the heat maps on that. So if I go ahead and select that right now, we'll go all the way back out again here. We'll go down and find our map. It's down here somewhere in my list. And you can see right there, this purple are popular areas where people are running and uh, running in this particular case. We've got sport profiles listed for running. If I go and change the map profile again, run settings, map, map theme. We'll do the dark mode just for the fun of it to show you kind of the, the differences there. And now you can see the dark mode. Uh, so these themes are just simply overlays that are built into the map. So they're not actually changing the maps, they're just changing the styling on the maps themselves. So I think now I've shown you almost everything there is to show you. Do one more quick sweep through here. We talked watch faces. We're not talking clocks. History, eh, history is history. It's been the same as before. Uh, activities and apps is just like before. Widgets, uh, we talked about the glances, controls. This is where you can control the different modes and whatnot that are around the ring, so like Garmin Pay and music controls and whatnot. Uh, watch face, we talked about sensors, is the same as before. Uh, map is again, you can do the map themes, you can do orientation, uh, all the map settings you've had in the past. Music is just like before, you can store music on here. Again, assuming you have the pro model and not the base model because there is no music on the base model and no Wi-Fi. Phone, there is no Wi-Fi on the base models I just mentioned. The physiological metrics we talked about earlier on, audio prompts, uh, user profile, safety tracking, activity tracking, navigation, all the rest of these are all the same as before. And then just for fun, we'll flip back over and show you the sensor on the back there. And you can see that virtually the same uh, Garmin Elevate sensor that is in the 4Runner 945, as well as the uh, Garmin Mark series watch. And then the same connector that we've seen as well in the 945, the Phoenix 5 Plus series, Phoenix 5 series for a while now. It is different than the Mark series though, so do keep that in mind. On the solar side, since I got just a second here before my camera battery dies, you can see that on the edge there, right there where it shimmers, that little ring right there is solar at 100%, that little thin one millimeter all the way around, solar at 100%, but there's actually solar panel across the entire back of the glass there, which is getting 10% efficiency underneath the entire grill glass, which goes across the entire plate, so entire display. So there's no worry about like scratching that little, you know, layer there that you see shimmering in the light, uh, the studio here. It's all under a single sheet of Gorilla Glass. Okay, there you go. Hopefully you found this interesting or useful or something. Go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there if you did, as well as the subscribe button. There's plenty more sports technology goodness to come over the next little bit. I promise you this is not the last of things in the last video you're gonna see in the next week and a half or so. It's gonna get, get a bit crazy. So enjoy and have a good one.